delighted to be here once again. We were here two months ago to look at uh, unlocking wells from the entrepreneurial spirit. And we're also here today to continue our conversation, looking at uh, the whole thing is centered on looking at the dialogue between where we are and where we must be and ought to be in life. You see, it is what you do that, uh, that translates. It is motion that makes you leave one point A to point B. So until you generate the motion, you cannot move. And uh, the world as it stands today, the whole global motions on Earth is, uh, is denominated in money. All of the motions in life is made possible by money. You came here because uh, money facilitated your coming. Either you came with your vehicle, fuel, you took public transport. You live in a home. It's money that uh, make that possibility happen. Either you're paying the rent or you build a house for yourself. To speak with somebody, you want to make a phone call, my parents are not here. Is it free? You see, the, you see this is the, money is not just more, the idea of money. Money is, uh, is communication. You see how powerful tool it is. It's, it's a, in fact, money is our first mode of communication in life. If you go to Brazil today, you don't need to know anybody in Brazil. Once you get to Brazil today, you will get somebody that will leave the family for one week and be your tour guide for a week. How is that possible? What makes it possible? You leave the family for one week and be your tour guide for that what? For that one week. So you see what uh, money does. So if our conception of money is not right, Oh, don't see it for what it is. It's, uh, it's the whole, is the medium of exchange and the communication for the whole world. The whole world is one in money. Unite the world, money unites the entire world. Money. So that concept of money, money, money. I don't want money, prosperity. No, that's not what we're talking about. We are talking about what make the possibilities on earth happen. I'm sure some of us did wedding. My brother here, I know he did wedding. But she you are or pastor. You know, he did wedding. Right? You know how those days look like. So this is how our this is the foundation of our world. To, to, to transfer value, to get services. The things you have in mind to translate it to reality sometime is facilitated by money. The people you love, the measure of love you want to show them. Some of us, you know, oh, my, my daddy, what my daddy did for me in life. But how, how would you reach back to your father? My mom, my mother, I want to change their living conditions. So I want this, and that this, everything you want to do, what we facilitate it. You see how our world is built. So if we live in denial, then we are shooting ourselves in the leg. And then again, you see these things, uh, I'm just trying to give us a bit foundation here before we continue. The way the world is designed, money does not come from anywhere. It doesn't come down, it doesn't fall like rain. Money is not something, okay, uh, you get from here or there, maybe people just give you like that, you know, on a regular basis, you know, in a normal basis or something. You have to generate the motion. You have to generate the means that we attract money to come. Money moves. Money too is motion. You see, money facilitates motion, generates motion. Money itself is, is motion. And then God leaves that responsibility to you. It's your responsibility. 
I was speaking in contact five, it was last month. And then I, I, we did some, uh, you know, did some brain teasers. Fire. And I asked them that fire, was it created or was it part of God's creation? God made human beings and then pushed them into the world to go and survive on their own. Look at this beautiful called fire. He didn't show them, this is fire, this is how you make fire. You will go and make fire by yourself. By engagement and interaction with this world, you will come out with possibility what to do. How? Look at the first fire. Nobody told them about fire. So there were things that existed in creation that God did not tell man. He says the glory of God to conceal what? A matter. And it's the honor of kings to what? To search it and to bring it out. You have prayed, God has answered your prayer. You will go and bring out the answer. You see how these things work? But when we are prayed and we are still waiting for God to do that aspect, God there, that's an aspect that God will not do. God told the man to be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth. What did God do next? God brought the means to him. He brought the woman. Did God tell him what to do next? Did he tell him where everything was? Eh? Did he tell him where it was? The man who had to bring it out. You see who your father is. And that's why there are so many unanswered what? Prayers. In quote, I use the word in quote because the prayers had already been answered. You have prayed and God has given you the answer. And when God has given you the answer, God has already answered you. The next stage is for you to now sit down and say what? How? Jacob was running from me. Jacob was going to was leaving the house of Laban. And God said, you should go back. He said, you should go. Go, to your, go and I'll be with you. In Genesis 32, Esau was coming. And he had prayed. After he had prayed that God, I fear him. Deliver, him, deliver me from the hand of my brother, from Esau. He sat down. He said, okay, let me divide them into company. Who taught him that one? Hmm? God came by. He said, he separated into company, two band. If Esau attack one, the rest will what? Will flee. Then the other one again, he brought them into band and was presenting gift by gift, gift by gift, layer of it until he got to Esau. You see, some who have this uh, mentality that are prayed and then you are waiting for God. You wait for 30 years. And when you meet him, he said, I've answered. Daniel was praying, he said, 21 days ago, the answer was sent. 21 days. He said, as soon as you started praying, God sent the answer. And so that brings me to what I want to say, even before we go into what I want to say, go into now. You see, in the building, it is the people in the house that knows what is in the house. Not the people outside. That brings me to our life. You see, inside your life, the things that are there, you are the only one that knows it and you are the only one that can see it. The people in the house are the only people that can see the things that are what? In the house. Please, the people outside, can we call them to manage this place before we bring the many seats? Uh, uh, please. Please, you are all welcome. We are sorry for the arrangement of seats. We are getting more seats. Mm. So inside the house, it is the people in the house that can see what is where in the house. So your own life, you are the one in that life. And you are the one that can see the things and the possibilities in that life. So if you are waiting for someone to come and tell you what to do, or maybe the things to do in life, then we'll wait for till thy kingdom come. So what we do is to, is to stimulate people, to stir them, to inspire people, to look deep within and bring out things from inside. 
that can be the answer to the prayer you've been praying and that can facilitate our lives. I take it again. The potentials that you have, the things you can do, you talk to 10 people, 10 of them will do different things. One man go to establish a school. One person go and set up a, 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 a pure water factory. So you see from the inside. Now, this here is the danger. The things you are seeing inside, if you don't bring it out or communicate it, there's no way people can know. You see the danger? You're like all the things in this house now. If you don't tell the people outside, they cannot know. So there are things in your life, maybe you are looking at them and you are looking at it that is small. This one is not it. That one is not it. First of all, the things you see, first of all, you communicate to them. You communicate before you engage. And then in communicating them, don't communicate to the wrong set of people. Ah, nothing can happen. Oh, this one, they will push it down. What I'm simply saying that we have enormous responsibility. Beyond the things we think, the way we think it, or the way we know it. So the things you have looked down upon, this one, nothing can come. You see, there is nothing you can do in life that cannot translate. It depends on how we do it. And then the critical factor of it, the blessings of God. And then that one is already, that one is, is, is readily on ground. God is ready to bless the things that we do. But the point is us. Maybe not doing the things we ought to do or limiting ourselves. Somebody went and studied. He ties himself down to the thing that he studied. He cannot go beyond that place. So I read the, uh, maybe agronomy, have you? Or I read the, uh, I'm a medical doctor. You cannot do anything beyond medical doctor. Medical doctor is what you have learned. Maybe what God has put in you may be different. Are you hearing me? Medical doctor is what? What you have learned. And then the things that God has put in you that may shoot you, I, I use the word may, maybe what? Maybe different. One of the past governors of this state was a medical doctor. So if I call Dr. Lushegu Mimiko now, what do you know him for? The best name, neurology in town. Can you see, you see that something was he driving? He still, he still, he still did that his medical something. You can, when he governed on those things, you can see the touch of uh, his, uh, his medicine. But beyond that medicine he studied, they will see that you could see that something higher brought him to light and glory. So when we foster this self-limitation on ourselves, then we limit ourselves for life. You're always thinking, what can I do? You see the thought pattern? What can I do? What more can I do? In the things that I have started doing, the things that I am doing, how best, how more can I do it? And then what else can I do? God created man to engage. You see, from the very first beginning, you are going to engage your environment. You're going to engage your surroundings. You only told him, this one, don't eat this one, but every other thing you can eat it. How is he going to eat it? It's left for him to find out. You know, there are some plants, if you eat, you start purging. Eh? You will find it out on the field. But get into the field first. You see, there is no excuse for failure. What did I say? Yes. Your default setting is success. When you fail, you are going outside of yourself, outside of what the default word setting. That's why it's easier to be rich than to be poor. Wealth is much more easy, easier. It's easier to be rich than to be poor because that's who you are. The day that God made man, this is how he made you. He gave you all the empowerment you need from creation to succeed. I'm sure everybody here has the human mind. Right? Yes. The human mind, you see everything that God did in Genesis chapter 1? is packaged in the human mind. That's the creative genius of God that God put inside human being, the mind. That's why somebody sat down and saw birds flying. How can you think about it? 
that you can make a machine. You put things together. What are you putting inside? That you sit and you sit inside and now go up. Can you rob mine with the first man that did the airplane? No, no, you look at us here now that you put something. That you'll be safe. You will travel from here for two hours. You are inside the air, inside one kind of machine. You know why that kind of thought is possible? You see, inside of our human body, God put his creative genius. What made the world, God put it inside human being. And so we're able to understand the world and make things also out of the world. I was preaching to them in orientation camp uh, and, 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 and NCCF, Nigerian Christian Corpus Fellowship. You know this child you are shouting Nigeria? Hmm? God did not, God did not, when God made man, it is not in the mind of God that the government will provide for you. When God made man, God made the earth. And it is from the provision of the earth that man will get what? The substance. There are people in this country now, they don't need Nigerian government for electricity. They generate their electricity. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Are they waiting for the government? No. There are people in this nation, they generate their own water. I know a lot of us here generate your water. Do you need the government? So what God gave man in the beginning, God gave man the earth. And that's why Ecclesiastes 5, 5 8, 9 says that the profit of the earth is for all. The king himself is served by the few. What God gave you is the same thing. Your life is like Adam. God created Adam and pushed him into the world. And that's how God pushed you out into the world to go and survive. And all of the tools that you need, God gave it to you. You know where the tool is? The mind that you have. So if we give ourselves excuses, we are going to harvest what? Excuses. You are going to harvest it. So it begins from you and it starts from what? I. Don't accept anything less. Everything exists in this world. Poverty exists. Wealth exists. Sufficient money to just take care of yourself and your family and you manage what? Exist. Possibilities what? Exist. Impossibility what? Exist. Why did the leper say that, Kai, they saw possibility, right? Somebody that was in the king's palace said that it is not possible. And to that man it was not what? Possible. But the people that say it was possible what? They saw the possibility. And that's why Henry Ford, one of his golden uh, quotations, he said, if you think what? You can. You can. But if you think you can't, you can't. Please, I want to beg us again. In my interaction with a lot of people, this is one of the core, core, core cardinal issues. You pet yourself. What did I say? You pet what? You pet yourself and you give yourself what? Excuse. That's it. So in the mind of God and the, in the expectation of God, you have everything that you need to succeed in life. Now, what we are here now, we are going to be learning the how. Learning the how and then uh, try to implement and work on the things that we are learning and even the things that are even already in our heart or some of the things we have started doing. Every successful people have the same story. You know, I said before that it is easier to be what? I want us to echo it. I say it is easier to be rich than to be poor. Wealth is easier than what? Poverty. Yes. So that you are poor, that means you have, you have gone the extra mile. Yeah. Because every successful people, they have the same what? Story. But failure is complicated. If you pick 10 successful people, you can draw a line through all of the story they tell you. Everything they tell you will be similar. 
But if you pick 10 unsuccessful people, you hear, you hear stories that you have not had, that your grandfather did not hear throughout their lifetime. You hear somebody tell you that they say in my village, hmm? that they, they, you tell you the, the village history. You tell you again that uh, they, my landlady, nobody that, nobody that stays in that house has ever succeeded. You will come, you hear all kinds of stories. But this one, they tell you they worked hard. They will tell you they were diligent. They tell you they saw opportunity. They put, they tried it. They tried it, it was not working, they had to try again. Can you see? This is one thing I, I have, all, what I'm telling you now is not a, a product of yesterday. It is what I have believed my life and uh, when I came into that awareness, and then I started working on it. I, I, start, I start engaging and interacting with things. Things that people have done, they say it cannot succeed. So people call and tell me a whole long story. Ah, this person, this one cannot succeed. I say, but I've done it, and then this is, this, this is the result. How you do it? All right, are we together so far? Eh? Have you taken the appetizer, all right? If you are coming for long, the first of all, serve you dessert. So please, I want one or two person, tell us what you have had. Can you give somebody the mic? After just let one or two people, then I'll talk about the financial process. So I've learned this morning that um, what is easier to acquire than poverty. Okay. And um, everything lies within our heart to be determined. So even if we have ideas, it is important that we, we do not become a, a brain teaser, but we have to bring out everything we dreamt of into light. So we don't look down on any idea. So we have to start from somewhere. And um, we want to avoid fostering self-limitation. We do not want to limit ourselves. I can't, I can't achieve that. It is impossible. So we shouldn't, there is impossibility and there is possibility. So it all depends on our mindset and our determination, whether to succeed or not. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, sister. So please, in this order, you tell us your name and then you speak to us. Thank you very much, sir, for the appetite. I think if we go with that alone, we've gotten something already. Um, everything you said, I got them, but the two that struck a really strong chord, which I've also tried to tell people, is that number one, the government, God did not create the government to be your support, to be your provider. We are to provide for ourselves. That's one. And then number two, that every successful man, they all have almost about the same story. They could relate it in different forms or based on their experience and their individuality, maybe also where they live and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, sometimes when we pick a, um, somebody, maybe an author that has written 10 books, when you read the 10 books, you will discover at the end of the day, they are still trying to say the same thing in different ways. So those are the two big major things that I got from that. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you so much. All right. Okay. Yeah, uh, somebody is here. Okay. Okay. You're welcome. Sorry. Uh, oh, everything you said there resonated with me. Uh, most importantly, um, God is our provider, and he has provided a head for us. So it depends on our engagement with the head that we can determine what we are going to get. Everything we need is already on the head. And they already said the other things, so that's very good. All right, thank you so much. Okay. There's somebody here. Okay. All right, thank you so much, sir. This is beyond the business of this um, for what he said, I've never heard this before in my life. And he said, God, when God created this world, he didn't have it in mind that the government will provide for us. And uh, the 
this, in fact, I'm taking this and I will hold on to this. And then another thing he said is that the, the four lepers at the gate of Samaria saw the possibilities. But someone in the palace could not see the possibilities. And then what I'm taking out of it is that where you sit, where you stand does not matter. It does not, it's, it does not hinder what you see. So wherever I am, wherever you are, you can see further than even the one. You are not disadvantaged that you are not in the palace at this time. Thank you. You're welcome. Can we always appreciate uh, Let's add life to what we're doing here. Well done, sir. God. One of the engineers I got while you were talking is um, communicating our potential with the right people. Over time, I've been mixing this up. I've been moving with. Uh, a lot of people, but not with the right people that can really help my potential. But thank God I'm here today and I've been able to get that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is John James. Okay, um, I just want to reaffirm some of the things that um, great minds have said today in the house. And the reason why I want to say it is because of I believe that when we listen to and a, a particular word several times is take is take with, with us. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. The first one is that the government was never created to provide for our needs or to provide for us. So with that, I I just already had this mindset even before now that um, nobody is actually entitled to help you. You know, in this generation, we we find um, youth always believe that there is this particular person that must help me. If it doesn't help me, then there's no there's no point trying for myself. At least I have this person, this person must help me. So today that statement um, gave me on that affirmation that we are not created to depend on the government or anyone. That whatever we need for sustainability is in, inside of us. We just need to relate with it to get um, the fullness of what God has have in stock for us. And also what caught my mind again is the fact that Pastor said our first communication on earth is money. And when you go to another country, you don't have to know anybody. Once you have your money, you can communicate well with anybody. Money gives you access to any community. Then also one of the things that stand, um, um, stand as um, my take home today is that the power of possibility. There is nothing, there is nothing that is impossible. Whatever we can think, whatever we can, we can, we can conceive can be established. That's one of the things that stood for me today. So I'm reaffirming it again so that it can stay with us. With just these three points, I believe that our year is set ablaze through the grace of God. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Okay. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, there's something Pastor said that um, it is easier to succeed than to fail. And I, I think I, I just love that. You know, failures shift blames. If you, flame, if you fail in life, you have to blame your stepmother. You have to blame your village people. And I keep on asking myself, people like Tony, Jimovia, do they have village people? They all have. <laughs> so failure makes you blame others. Why success help make you help others? That the way you be a success, those your village people, they will submit their CV to you. Yeah. Uh, so let's succeed in life. Pastor, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. I'm tired of it on Larry watching. Ah, oh, I gave something big this morning. <laughs> and according to what Pastor said, he said, God has embedded in us genuine mind or brain to prosper. But uh, what I think that limits man to execute whatever idea come to him or her is the ability to respond to the idea 
in time. Because I can say, don't wait. What, when, once idea come to your mind, don't wait too long to execute the idea. Because if you wait, because what you are thinking to do, other people are thinking to do it also. If you fail to do it and someone else come to do it, ah, say, ah, I have this thing in mind to do. Eh? I don't know. Meanwhile, God give every one of us mindset and inspiration to generate idea and the ability to execute it. So once the idea come to our mind, don't let us wait too long to execute it. The Lord will help us. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you so much. And we we'll just lay something on top again before we continue. You see, there is wealth everywhere. I take it again. There is wealth everywhere. That hits the point of, uh, we talked earlier again, ability to see possibilities. I know of the story of a young boy, he runs in the compound. In the compound. The mother, you can't catch. Just running, running in the compound. Stop running, stop running like that. You know, a young, a young parents, he runs in the compound. Do you know that boy grew up to, to win an Olympic gold medal? So why a little boy run? You know, can you see anything inside? He running inside compound. That's Eric Liddell. Yes. He won the first Olympic gold medal for Scotland in 1926, thereabouts. He just wrote pre, pre, pre inside compound. Everything there's people those days, people that you know very funny, you just you just laugh, laugh and go. If the story see the same. Some people saw wealth inside, others did it for a generation and went. Just to make people laugh. They came together and said, night of what? Just so you know, this funny joke, he said, you just say that it's not a serious person. There's a way you can maybe talk, maybe you are tired, you're being the guy to talk and laugh inside. But inside that one, some people sat down and they, you see, see different. What did I say? See, see what? See different. Just to laugh. You remember those days uh, playing football, you know, your, your child would go and play football, he's keen. He used to greet the child when he come back. He likes playing football too much. That's all from me. And tomorrow we are crying when, we are, when the same person is now old. Old and everything is not looking, cannot take care of medical bill. He's sick and everything, but the boy that will have taken you outside the country and will have maintained your health for you, you live till you are 92 years old. Here you are, you are dying at 64 years old because of poor treatment. The white man will pick a child from the age of five years old. When they say, I have this flair for boy, I have this flair, and they start nurturing the person because they have already seen wealth inside. But we don't see anything. You see why I say there is wealth everywhere. Some other person knows how to cook very well. She just loves cooking and everything. But some other person, they cook very well, and inside that cooking, they see what? They see what's inside. One of the rich women in Abuja now, I know those of us that are familiar with Abuja very well, Bilbak. Bilbak restaurant. One man is a multi, he's a billionaire. He was selling Amala. This is Amala. She was selling Amala, you know, Amala in Lagos. So when Abasanjo went to Abuja, they just took her there to be making Amala for them. You know, some other person will end up making Amala. But this woman, if you go to airport, you see her at this thing there. We've been to her place a couple of times. It's always, when you enter there once, it's always a dream place to go. In the same what? Cooking. Anything you can name in this life, people have taken and they have translated it. Cooking. Any single thing you can mention. That's why I say there is a wealth what? There's everything, nothing there is wealth. There's wealth. You know those who are gifted in talking. Now, if you want to do your wedding now, you go and hire them. In Yoruba side, they call it alaga, right? They can talk and, you know, yes, midwife between two parties. Just anything you can mention. Let me tell you why some people don't make money. The world, you see, value, wealth is the, I've told us the last summit that wealth is the exchange of value, right? 
you know, you want to feel, you want to laugh, you want to, you go and pay people, they do their night of a thousand la laugh or something, or some of those comedians, they just make you laugh and then you detoxify, you know, like that. So, some of all the things you do, you don't see world inside. And so you are not able to do it for a fee and translate it to what? To a fee. You see somebody is gifted, he knows almost half of our, he knows half of Akure, right? You know almost half of the people in Akure, that's what. All you need to do is to bring a value that you can transact for what? A, a value you can trade in exchange for something. And then they are your patronage. Because in business, your first customer are the people that you know. These are your first client. They are the people that what? That you know. Half of the people in Akure that you know all of them. Some of them have maybe a vehicle they want to sell, right? You, you, since you know half of you in Akure, you know someone that wants to sell a vehicle, you know another person that wants to what? To buy a vehicle. Putting that transaction through you in the middle, you get your value. But if you cannot see it, you, can, you are not seeing it. Oh, somebody has a property. Another person wants to what? To buy. Is that not called agency? Is that not all? Yes. See, boys in Abuja, those days were in Abuja like uh, 19 years ago, 2005, sharing offices with one of my elder brother. You know, like that, just, he doesn't have an office, he does agent, going up and down. This guy is a multi-billionaire now. He has estate everywhere in Abuja. Not one, but plenty of them. But I also know people in that same Abuja in the last 19 years, they were always looking for one government, something or the other. Some of them are still calling me to pray for them. That this government, I let them find people with this government. You gave somebody an office, you shared an office. With, you said they car the person, one of those boys drive. You say you can't see it on the street of Abuja. This person you share office with. Sometimes you see, join the vehicle that is already moving. If you cannot get your own vehicle. You know, like now, we're in the city of Akwena, you say, I will never get to Lagos until I go to Lagos in my own vehicle. You hop into other people's vehicle and you get to Lagos. Can you join something that is working? God told Phil, he said, join that word. Chariot. He said, go and look for chariot, buy chariot. He saw a chariot moving. Go and buy a chariot so that I can follow that chariot. He said, what? Hop in, jump into that vehicle. So I want us to start seeing. We must become seers. You sit down with people, you are seeing opportunity. A lot of people us know people in this life that can turn around your life, but you know that you cannot see. You cannot see. You know people that can turn a life around your life, but you cannot see. They will not just automatically turn around your life. It is the things you do when you start doing certain things, they start seeing it, and then you'll be amazed at the kind of people that will come in. I know somebody that somebody keep telling him, do something, he say no. He tells you all the whole problem in this world, why he cannot do it. But the person talking to the person, he didn't tell him, but he's ready to give him money. Just, it's just an idea. He didn't tell him. This is true life story that I know. He didn't tell him. He's ready to give him money in regions of million. But do, uh, no money, you know, you need capital to start a business. But he didn't tell him. You need capital to start a business. You need this one. You need that one. Uh, like that, I talk, 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 talk. You know, it's not like that. Be, capital, cap, money is not the first capital. That's what I want to do. When I talk about financial process, I'll show the first capital. Money is not the first capital. You know, money is not the first capital. You say, yeah, yeah, money, you know everything, you need money. Talk, talk, talk. They pay, talk, talk, no. You know why? Because, you see, somebody that cannot see certain things, if you put in money, the money will go down the drain. He can't see it. You now go and give the person money. You won't be able to manage it. So people always want to identify with what is working. That everybody want to jump into the success van. 
you kickstart the van, get it moving. It may not move very far, but people will hop in and give you the well with her that will make the vehicle to move very far. But generate motion with that vehicle first. So this one I cannot work, oh, this one, this one. Now, so that's it. Let's go to the business of the day, financial process. Are we together so far? This is not uh, here we demand, uh, we demand results. We not just come here. Did you pay any, any money to come for this seminar or this summit? No. It is out of the body we want to see people succeed. People have potential, they are not living it. Everywhere you can see them. God took Ezekiel, you know, everything, is, everything is Bible. From the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible. He told Ezekiel, can this bone live? Can you see potential in this bone? Ezekiel said, me, I don't know. And then with that conversation, a mighty army stood up. I've seen people I've spoken to, and I've seen what their life became. Yes. So we sat down and spoke together and, and talked things through. And you see the way things, the, the way their life, in fact, 360 degree change. So I need to get us in. If you have been seen before, you need to see some more. And if you have not been seen before, you need to start seeing. That's it, that's it. I've seen people grow from zero to hundreds of million in capital. Start a business and grow from, from zero to capital, to, to, to a hundred million portfolio. So it works. And not because of any special something. It's just you engage. So the financial process. So and talks about the first capital. If I may ask, so what's the first capital in life? Eh? Somebody say knowledge. Okay. In the financial process. The first capital. And then there's a first test you must pass in business. The first capital, the first test. And that is why a lot of people have failed, especially from our faith-based communities, believers in Christ Jesus. This is where a lot of people have failed. You don't, this is where you never rise from this, but if you don't fail this test, you don't rise from it again. It's difficult. And if you don't possess this capital, a lot of us are looking for capital, capital, capital. If you don't possess this capital, you can't get the capital you are looking for. But if you have this capital, you will get capital. It's 100 on 100. And that brings me to, number, to the first thing I will talk about, which is the integrity test. The integrity test. That's your first test in business. Pass the integrity test once and pass it at the first instance. Because you'll be tested. Pass the integrity test once. How many times? Once. And pass it at the first instance. There are, there are classes where you repeat class, but here there is no repeat class. You know that famous quote? You don't get a second chance to make a first good word impression. And that's your first capital, integrity capital. Integrity. Integrity. You see, holding water in a basket, hmm? holding water in a basket, is building a business or relationship or relationship on presumed integrity. It's like water in a basket. If the integrity is not there, that's the first ground in business. Money, you are dealing with money and the whole world is looking for money. This is how very important it is. Or you may think yeah, maybe integrity when you start working and they give you money. No. I'm talking about your person here. I'm talking about who you are. People that will have gotten off the ground, they never got off the ground because of this one. Are we together? 
So I say that if you, in business circle, you hardly get a second chance at integrity failure. I say you hardly get a second chance at integrity failure. In the Western nations, it is once. Fail it once and fail it for life. You will never be considered for anything demanding integrity. You see somebody is contesting for president. They want to bring something, not like in Nigeria here. Yeah. They want to bring something out. The Western nation wants anything that is, you won't be considered for it again. You miss it once and for life. So you feel the integrity failure. You may hardly get off the ground. From this early stage, Are we getting it? We love, oh, oh, this and, uh, oh, this is our community where it's easy to give out trust. Oh, give out trust and we just take it and take it for granted. You don't give, that's why I say you have to be tough with yourself. He you said there is no second chance here. So a lot of you will get to that stage where you will be tried and you may not even know that you have been tried. Are we together? So if, we, uh, if, you, if you have not laid the foundation of integrity and don't you don't have a business and you don't have what relationship. A business without integrity being there is like holding a water in a basket. And I'll explain it more. So you see where the financial process starts from. It does not start from the business, oh, this business proposal, this business on the table, no. The greatest epidemic in business is not a standard factor, it's human problem. The biggest challenge to business is a human problem. If you don't solve the human problem, you don't have a business. You go and open a shop and put somebody there, and you say you have a shop. You see this thing in integrity. It's scarce, and so it's very, very precious. People are looking for people of honest report. In the Bible, when they wanted to appoint deacon, what did they say? After they put Holy Ghost, what did they put? The Holy Ghost is there, they still put something there. What did they put? It's a man of what? Of honest report. Now, as I'm talking now, the Bible is running through our head. God will give you a second chance. Who will give you a second chance? But in the business balance, is it God that is in business? Is it God you are dealing with? You are dealing with men. When God will give you a, a second, a third chance repeatedly, men are not willing to give you. The father gave the prodigal son another chance. The boy in the house, did he give his brother? Did he give you a second chance? Eh? It's the reality of our world. You have to wake up to it. The father gave the boy another chance. The boy, that son in the house, did not give his brother a second chance. When John Mark failed them, Barnabas was willing to take him. Our foremost apostle, Apostle Paul, did he give him a second chance? John Mark, he said no. Elijah and Gehazi, Elisha. Elisha, did he give Gehazi a second chance? Adam and God and Adam, did God give Adam a second chance? Yes, he gave him, but not in this life, in another life. Even God, he gave him what? In another what? Life. Up to today, we are still suffering it. See the consequences. It was an the first test. See, God gave man integrity test. Don't eat from this. Why are all those things? It's very, very key. So if you want to go into entrepreneurship, the business world, you have to hang your life on it. What did the scripture say? He that is faithful in what? You'll be faithful in what? In much. You see that little, little things in your hand? God did with the whole of your life. Your life, did, your future depends on it. Do it well and manage it well. This is where believers crash. Great enormous potential and they just take it for granted. You think you can jump, jump on the laps of men as you jump on the laps of God. It's not God that does business, it's men that do business. You should know that people are not, you tell yourself that people are not ready to give you a second chance. 
So that one chance, take it. You take it and you are taking your life. You let it go, you are letting go your entire economic life. Somebody gave me money. I helped him to put in a business. So when the business was going down, I did everything. To, the first thing I did was to remove his money. I pulled out his money from that business. My own money in the business was times three of his own money. But I, let, I said, my own money, let it stay. Let me pull out the person's money. And how much of the person's money? Two million. I pulled out the person's money. The first thing I did was to pull out the person, and the person was not in the country. And I refunded the money back to the person. At the end of the day, I lost my own money. But I ensure I did not lose the person's money. You see, I say it's, it's, well, it's not as if I, okay, you know, I was talking about business, okay, uh, maybe when you are working and they give you money to go and buy material, integrity test. No. I say it starts from who you are. That will be a man or a woman of extreme integrity. You will never lack the money you need in life. Because you are the one that people are looking for everywhere. God said I sought for a man. God is looking for people. God is looking for such business people to commit resources to. Men are looking for such people. That's, it. That's your first capital. Don't say you don't have money. Oh, how do I generate money? No, you take it. Can you see? So when I pull out the person's money and I refunded the person back, if the person chatted me one time. Uh, he keep talking about, uh, you know, I just refunded, I said, this business, I don't, the way I'm looking at this business is not doing very well. No. I refunded the person's money back, 2021. You know, after he kept talking to me, okay, which other business again? Okay, if you want to do something, they, let me check the price of so something, you know, we keep relating. One day he shattered me. He said he was ready to, he said he shattered me, I want to give me 30 million. Yes to go and use it to run any business of choice. And so that we can do what we call uh, whatever the business produce, at least there's a way we share it. Two million to 30 million. How much did I say? Two million to what? To 30 million. You see? Look at this hall now, you, you can look, you know I say there's money everywhere. A lot of you don't know that here, if this is on ground, plus the second thing I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about two things under the financial process here. Number one is I talk about the integrity capital, the integrity test, that you should pass it once and pass it at the first word, instance. If these two things are on ground, I can assure you that 100 million will come out of this place if you put a business proposal on the ground from people that are seated here. Do you know what people have? Even when the people don't have, do you know the people that is talking to them? I know of somebody that told me that he got a hundred million into, into the business he was doing. He said his, one, his, brother, his brother was always on his neck. He wanted to push him money into Nigeria. He now told his brother and talked about it. Okay, this man is a person of 100% integrity. In Ibu, I, have, I spoke to somebody that gave the person about 20 million for business about two years ago. No, about three years ago. Because I know, and I have been sleeping since then. Because I know he's a person of integrity. He told me how he got 100 million. He said the person's brother, like that, like that, and he was with their money, and even said he wanted to return part of the money. You know, because he started building up, you know, his own fund. This was a person that came to the bank that was looking for one million naira loan from the bank to do business. Two years down the line, when I, when I went to the end of the year, party that he did, he had over 30 something staff. He came to the bank and should help him process a loan of one million. He later told me how he got funds, over hundreds of million. I say that pass the integrity test when? How many times? Once. And pass it when? And pass it at the first instance. Even the arm robber that has money is looking for a honest accountant. <laughs> Am I correct? Yes. yes. All the world is looking for honest people. He said, look for men of honest report full of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost feeling is not enough. Oh. Character is, is different. The Holy Ghost was inside something. Was character there? 
I mean, you full of the Holy Ghost, and you can see that uh, there are moral failures here and there. So the Holy Ghost will come and start building this in character. But the Holy Ghost is there, oh, the dimensions of the Spirit are there. But we may not allow him to build this one. Because this one takes time and is practical. You see how these things work? You are talking to people, business proposal, and it's not, uh, it's not the proposal they are looking at. They are looking at other considerations. And what are those other considerations? What is it? Yes, one of it is what? Integrity. I've told those, those people in my circle, I've told them this story before. There's this person, he works in a big company in Nigeria. I think his salary should not be less than two million. So they wanted to bring a, a business to Nigeria. I said, this person's salary, where he was, should not be less than two million. They wanted to bring a business to Nigeria. And they told his boss. And of course, it has to do with money, a lot of money in, in, in billions of Naira. So they just wanted somebody that would manage the business. And he called him. He's his boss. He called him. He said, and then the boss recommended him. He said, okay, let him think about it. He looked at the business, looked at the business, and he said, it's okay. When he was pitching to me last year, he sat down in my sitting room, right there with my wife. So he told me he had 100 official cars. Then the company has 100 official cars at his disposal. Of course, they brought him money from outside the country. They bring in dollars. So, and then uh, he told me, uh, he has even helped me to employ some people. You see? What did he have? His father was the minister. His father was the this thing. You will his boss recommend him. Eh? Sometimes we are in a group of people, you are just, you know, I say there's money everywhere. In that office, where he was being paid very well, there was the bigger money than this, whatever was anyone was still in that place. They say the preparation of the heart is who? Is man. Answer comes from where? From God. If answer is coming and the person is not prepared, the answer can never come. But the answer has left heaven. It has left heaven, but it cannot land. You see how it, how it works? And then they recommended him. One, yeah, some years back, somebody walked into my office. He said, I need two staff in Portacourt. Maybe lawyers or something that I should give him two staff. When I was working in Undo then, I was started, started thinking, this person is a very honest, the man is a very honest man. He has a lot of money, you know, so he said, but he's a very, he's a man of integrity. I started ranking my, you know, you can't just pick, uh, I know this person. At the end of the day, I didn't give him anybody. You know why? This is what we call it, don't soil your integrity on third party integrity. Don't. At the end of the day, the person misbehaves, who has misbehaved? This thing, don't joke with it too. Hey, I don't have money. I, no, you have money. The first capital is what? Integrity what? Capital. Somebody has called me that uh, I have a case in, in Ado that should give him a lawyer to help him handle that case. I said, well, I know a couple of lawyers around me, but I have not engaged them in legal uh, something before, and I, I, and I have integrity with this person that is calling me. I just declined the offer. I declined the offer. I said, well, I know a couple of lawyers, but uh -huh, because of course I have not done anything, maybe give them a job, how do you go about it? He said, I should give him in Ado. I said, people are looking for this thing. And what does it cost you to get it? Will you have to climb several mountains? Do you need money? Do you need anything? These are things you generate from within, without price, and without a third party impute, all by yourself. I've seen people giving me proposal. Okay, talk to people about it, but I can't talk to, okay, talk to, they'll ask you, tell me about the past. What do you know about this person? If I have given you money to go and me buy bread, and you have gone to, and run away with the money, because of the kind of person I am, I cannot say, oh, he's very honest. If you send him to buy bread, you bring your money back to me. 
You see how it works? I'm giving you practical examples so that to make this thing very real. And a lot of us here, you have a very practical examples like this. That's it. I know somebody, my sister told me a story. There was this man that comes to the bank. He's, a, he's into oil and gas. He comes to the bank and you see this person who was the head of operations in Abuja there. So the way the person attends to him, he comes again and again. He was seeing the person. Do you know one day he said, come and walk with me? He said, come and walk with me. Now he has houses in Abuja, flying all over the everywhere now. See, the person is very rich now. He just said, come and walk with me. He just come, do transaction. He said, you don't know that people are watching you. Even when nobody is there, eyes are there. This is where a lot of believers, brothers and sisters like us, me and you, that we need to talk to ourselves here. Sometimes the person that gives you a hundred thousand, what you may not know is that the person can give you five million naira, but he just want to wash you. It's not hundred thousand. This time he say, you come. He say, okay, no problem. I understand. It's okay. He just want to see what you do with it. You see, God promised Abraham. You see, this thing is very, very critical. This integrity, God does integrity test. You see, your prayer you are praying. God will test you. You to read this inscription here that is faithful, what? God will test you. Give me money. I want to be a kingdom financier. And here you are earning, uh, how much are they paying coppers now? 33,000. And you see what you are doing, 33,000. And you want to come and finance kingdom. 33,000, you cannot overcome 33,000, right? How can you overcome 33 million? It's that time you now get a beautiful idea. My father promised to build one house in the village. Let me go and do that one again. Let the kingdom, let the kingdom wait. Of course, kingdom is always there. God doesn't, for God to do any serious business with you, the first thing that God will do with you is integrity test. If you are talking, I want to serve God and let us make heaven. Right? Then, okay, you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that Jesus saved us. That one, you are okay. You are get born again and you are doing this thing. But if you now want to now be on earth and exercise our dominion mandate on earth, right? In the earthly affairs, yes, you know, we have the kingdom of God, we have the, the affairs of men, the things of this life. And God, ex God gave us a dominion mandate that has two expression in the things of the kingdom, everlasting life, and in the kings of the earth. God wants us to dominate in heavenly matters and dominate in earthly affairs. So that's why the first dominion that God gave man was not a heavenly dominion. It was an earthly what? Dominion. Because God has it in mind that man should dominate the earth. Man should govern on earth. Man should rule the earth. You have a family and then everything is going left and right and center. You can't feed your family today. You give birth to a child and everything. And you are saying God has called. It's because of the calling of God. That child you give birth to, did God call that child? It's not you that God called. And face your call and give the child food to eat. You see how it, it works? Before God gave birth to man, God made sure there was provision for man. Before he called them to serve him in the New Testament, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. Let me finish it up. So God calls man to what a prepared table. He says, he prepares a table for me where? In the presence of my enemy. This is the manner of your God. You are thinking of ever going to get married. And you are not thinking of providing in that, in that home. That's unfaithfulness. You think it's when you go and sleep with a girl or sleep with a man. You are unfaithful. That's why Paul said that he that does not provide for his own household is worse than what? And infidel, because it's in, the, it's in the DNA of God, and God put it in our DNA. Before he made the first man, he made provision. And every man that God called in scripture, go and check it. He told Elijah, I prepared the raven to feed you. When men of God will make a statement that if any man does not have the work to do, don't marry the person, you go on social media and start insulting. Do you know how many people are, how many people are, they, 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 their wives are packed out of the house because the man is not providing? We're handling so many cases like that. Why can't you provide? Worst case scenario, go to an uncompleted building and volunteer yourself for work. 
By the time you carry uh, cement, carry concrete, and carry all of those things, and, and they pay you at the end of the day, if you bring the money to the house, will your child reject the money? If you used to buy bread on the way, simple. There's just no excuse. Go and volunteer yourself. There's no work, there's no work. Go and volunteer yourself. You see the principle that Joseph used, right? He said, don't have anything again. Okay, I don't have the statue. I don't go, go and be a volunteer for us. You get someone that will pay you. So you see how these things work. So that core foundation of integrity. In little, little things, might not even be in business, I talk about your person. People are washing you. The, the immediate past vice president, how did he become vice president? He served with uh, uh, Ushimbajo, right? He served with uh, Tinubu in Lagos State. So if he was not a man of integrity, he knew that he knew who this person was. That's why when they gave him the slot for VP, he gave it to him. Was he a politician? You see where integrity can take you. So first capital. Oh, when all of us are here, want to do something, let me bring, narrow it down. It's not only in money. All of us here, all of us belong to a group. We want to do something, you are the one that will be the last. Oh, let us do this, we want to do this thing. The common thing that we want to do, you are not in the forefront. You are not visible. It's also part of integrity. When you are being honest to any cause that you are inside, you are part of the team. If you want to commit resources, they are thinking about, oh, let's put this person in charge, you can go and sleep. You can go and sleep. I met somebody when I traveled to Kaduna. He's a Muslim and he's been a family friend for childhood. We grew up, but I know this man. I know him. They are very honest people. Why believers that are full of the Holy Ghost? You cannot stake yourself for them. If this person, if I when he said he was doing one business, he was doing very well in business. Say you may need additional funds. Say if you need the fund, I need me to stake out for you. I will stake out for you. He's a Muslim. If he collects thirty million and I have the power to stake out, I will stake out. Because the foundation of it, this one, you are sure. All like this one, people hold you and they are not sure. You see, you see the problem of so many believers. So many believers. You are not even visible in this realm, this region of integrity. Look at Joseph. What did Joseph have? Okay, he said, so is it only Joseph that had a dream? How many people have had dreams and nothing happened? I saw the 11th star, Joseph had a dream because God elevated Joseph. Do you know how many begin to go and sit down with people, go and check the, the volume of dreams and vision that God showed them in the past, and yet the vision does not come true. Joseph added his own. Joseph was a man of integrity. Nobody was there, right? He said, I cannot do this thing. Against what? God. Some of us, everywhere, everywhere is dark, nobody is seeing you. You will do it and you clean your mouth. Father God, I'm sorry, no repentance now. You will repent, God will forgive you. But there are places you cannot enter in God again. Are you hearing me? There are places you cannot what? Enter in God again. If no, if no eye is there, always remember the darkness, the darkness is the eyes of God. Psalm 139. See, the night shines like the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. The night and the day are both the same thing to God. The day is his eye. The night what? Is his eye. When no eye is there, you know, always remember that the eyes of God is there. Who can over? You see, this is a deep body. I have and I'm sharing it with us here. Many does not rise from these ashes of broken integrity at the early stage of their life. That's it. At the early stage of their life. I told you the story of that man. When they called him, they gave him the job, and then he's doing it 
and uh, he's doing very well. So a lot of stories upon story, story upon story, and everybody is looking for this. That's number one. Number two, please, one or two person, let me hear what you've heard from this one before I go to the second foundation. Thank you very much. I pray personally, which I want to give everybody who wants to pray personally, God will increase you more in Jesus' name. Amen. Sincerely, before now, if anybody asks me, what is the first thing to know when it comes to financial uh, process? I will say money. I will say money. But as you are about to start, and you say it's no money. I started troubling my mind. Is it is it is it interest? Is it desire? But you mentioned integrity. God Almighty will increase you, sir. Amen. I've learned more, and I want to learn more in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Sir. Now let me add to that. You know, I made a statement. I didn't explain it. The first thing God will do with you is to conduct integrity test. God can be working with you for two, three years, doing one or two things, but God will not do tangible business with you until he has conducted integrity test. And I can give you lists from scripture. God told Abraham, I will give you, make you a father of many nations. I will do this and do this one. Then God began with him. So God was blessing him here and there. He was seeing God, he was seeing dimensions of God, glory here and there. God had not committed himself to that world. Did you hear what I say? Yes, sir. Did you hear me well? Yes, sir. What God told Abraham, right? God, he meant it, but he had not committed to it. Because the things that God is telling you, until you commit to it, God will not commit to it. Yes, sir. God will just show you the plan. Plan, is it the same thing as building? I can come and show you a business, a building plan now. Is it the same thing as a house? No. Can you live inside the plan? No. Genesis 12, God showed Abraham the plan plan. This is the plan. And then Abraham began journeying with God. And then we'll go to Genesis 12, Abby. We'll now go to Genesis 22. And God said, by myself have I swore, I will do it. Now if Abraham had failed that place, what will happen? God will still go ahead and do it. You see, many are called, but few are what? Are chosen. Few are chosen because the many failed the integrity test. David. David too. God tried David. Tried David repeatedly. That was why David was the only king that sat and handed over to his son. Nobody could kill him on the throne. David would have died on that throne. If he had killed King Saul. God carried Saul. Two times he delivered Saul to David. His boy said, kill him, kill him, kill him. I, the enemy that has been trying to kill you. You, you even use scripture. Suffer not a wish to live. Trouble of Israel, you know, by my sword that God has anointed. He said, I will not touch the Lord's anointed. That was why nobody could touch David. No man could touch David. Everything happened not just because God loved David. No, oh, God loved Joseph too much. You will do your part. If you don't do your part, God will try with another person. He told Moses, Moses, let me restart all over again. God does not live in time. God lives in eternity. God can end a thousand. God can end ten thousand years and restart all over. You are the one that lives in time. You are the ones that calculate. God does not calculate. He told Moses, "Let me start all over." Thousands of years, God was ready to bury it, and then restart in Moses. Second example, David. You remember when they were coming from the battlefield? David said they should share equally, right? But the other uh, people say, let's not give to the people that did not follow us to battle. David said, let us share it what? Equally. That was how David possessed the throne of the Messiah in the spirit realm. The throne of David. The Bible says when Jesus was coming, he said, say, uh, he was telling this, told me that he would sit on the throne of his father David. That was how David became the father of Jesus Christ in the spirit, uh, in the flesh. In the flesh, oh God is his father in the spirit, but in the flesh, in the body, David is the father of Jesus. Thou son of David. 
David will give to the people that went to war, and he'll give to the people that did not what? Go to war. You see, all of these things built the throne of that. That's how David built the throne. Why do you say the throne of King Saul if he's only the anointing? It's not the anointing that made that throne. No. David, his character and his personality that, that built that throne of David in the spiritual. All of them. Elisha. Remember Elisha and Elijah? He wanted uh, the man to. But he had to pass the test. Elisha said, Stay here. God has sent me what? They were in Giga. God has sent me. He said, I will not stay here. I will follow you. Some of you cannot follow Elijah for one day. Of course, you are a graduate or you are, you know, at my age. Elijah. Elijah may not talk to you for one week. He was a wild man. That, I respect Elisha a lot. Yes. He followed him. Say, he got to Bethel Abbey. Say, God has sent me to Bethel. From Bethel, he said, God has sent me to Jericho. From Jericho, he said, God has sent me to Jordan. And immediately they crossed that river. It was not God, it was Elijah. Elijah said, come, come, what do you want? Tell me what I'll do for you. And he followed him to Jordan. If you won't go back, you'll have gone back. Elijah will have just dropped the mantle. So maybe you have to pick it up in the spirit realm. And that time you have to, maybe it's not Elijah again, maybe another generation. He followed him and followed him to the city. As surely as the Lord God lived, I will not leave you. You know, you go again, they are leaving you. Go again, they are leaving you. You come to somebody's house, they did not receive you the first day. You are not coming back again. Even though you, somehow God is connecting you to that person, to receive, maybe the way the person treated you one day, you know, he told me, I have my own house. No, I don't have food in my house. My job is God's, you know, God does integrity tests sometimes by giving you direct instruction or by arranging circumstances around you. In the case of Elijah, it was circumstances. One man that failed the integrity test, I won't explain is the, is the, you know, the prodigal son failed his own, they saw that boy in the house who failed his own. He didn't know the father's heart. Where the heart of the father, he was doing other things, I do, I do your garden, I do, he was doing other job in the house, but the heart of the father is there. Why didn't he go and look for his, his brother? Even when the brother came, he was even angry. The father had two sons, two of them ended up leaving the house. You know, the father went out of the house two times. He went out to the house twice to go and look for his two sons. Where the prodigal son went out. When the prodigal son come and got into the house, this other boy too, what? He left the house. The father had to go out. He said, oh, he didn't go far, but both of them left the house. So the father had to look for his son. He had to look for his two sons. The father never had a son. And that's why you see that... Uh, he said that God then, uh, then God had to become a son in his own house. You see why Jesus became a man? He saw, he saw that there was no man. That prophecy in Isaiah, he played the house in that house. He said he saw that there was no man, and then God became a man. There was no son, and the father became a son. In his own house. Praise the Lord. Judas Iscariot. I mean, I remember Judas. If the Bible says it was numbered with what? The twelve. But where did he feel? Is it anointing? Judas was part of the people that went out healing the sick and raising the dead. But look at where he failed. A lot of us are looking for anointing. Get the anointing, but get something in addition and get something more. Right? Okay. Let me go to the second one. Maybe, uh, yeah, I'll just say, but maybe next time I'll, maybe in the subsequent summit, I'll tell us how to deal with the integrity issue uh, with, with yourself and with, especially with other people. How to handle it in business. But if you don't, now we are talking about you having integrity, but you handling integrity from people. If you don't, you don't have a business. You don't. I'll tell us how to do it. Okay, the second one. Please give somebody the mic. Let me hear somebody's input. Then I'll tell her the second one. Good afternoon once again. My name is John James. Okay, um, so far so good. 
I have learned a lot from um, this integrity test. You know, one of the points that Pastor made was that the first thing you need in business, that's the first capital we need in business, is actually not money or idea, as people always say. The first thing we need in business is integrity test. And integrity um, test, um, that's integrity capital, and the integrity test should be passed once at the initial, at the first instance, because we might not always have um, a second chance to correct a first impression. And also, one thing I learned also was that um, Pastor um, advised us not to soil our own integrity for a third party. You know, most times we are always eager and quick to say, yes, I know this person. I can stand it for this person. I can do this, I can do that. We should always be very, very careful of that because that can also ruin us our own integrity. And one other thing I learned about integrity is that um, the Lord will not position some things in our hand if he has not, um, he, the Lord will not trust us if he, if he has not tested us. Let me use that phrase, that the Lord will not trust us with something big if he, if he has not um, trusted us. Just like um, the scripture says, um, he that is um, faithful with little will be, will be, faith, will be trusted with more. You know, um, in this generation, all of us want to become billionaires, want to become trillionaires, and wish I know we will become. But then, um, how far well have we, have, we, have we done our assignments, even the little we have? Just like um, when my daddy said, he was talking about most of us, we have businesses and we put people there. And we trust that the business will just work like that. What has been our own personal impulse in the business? How, how, um, how have we been um, well committed to that small business, even while trying to you know, expand? How well have we been committed? So integrity can also come in that form, like how well have you been committed to that little thing that you have gotten, you, so that it will not be um, too, I don't know how to put it, but because of the, the larger extent at which we want to go, we will not forget the little one we have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, I want you to give us some tips. You know, this program can be in the next two months. <laughs> and some of us might miss out for some things. If we have to wait till that two months time for us to get some of your tips, because we've heard about you, we know how God has elevated you. You know, that sacrifice thing that you mentioned about Abraham, you know, the issue of integrity test, you gave one example, you said NYC, 33,000, how prudent, how do we use that 33K? You know, to to affect, you know, because if the kingdom world is going to come, it's not going to be for personal consumption. Because Bible said that he that keep is not rich towards God. So God cannot dispense riches in the pocket of the person. The person can have or live a normal life, but God cannot entrust the person from what you said with wealth like that of Abraham. So Abraham gave what was more important. So sir, we've heard that we have the things you have done. So give us just two examples, sir of the things you have done before that brings results so that we can follow your path. Okay, all right. I will, I will, I will, I will note it down. You see, yeah, business is a long shot. So it's not a thing we, we hurry. So I will answer this question, but I will bring that same approach to this, uh, to this gathering. Something you ask me now, I may not answer it today. So when you want to do a business, you'll be ready for a long journey, right? Uh -huh. So even what you are saying, I'm going to talk, talk on it, but I may not even talk about it today. So you should be prepared for the long haul. Uh -huh. So you have to be calm and take it what? Step by step. So let me just lay this foundation now. Maybe in the course of the interactive session, I can say one or two things on that, or maybe at another time and then let's out also forget this is a summit success team summit summit and uh, when the uh, ruben comes you talk about it and i'll let me drop a hint i also discuss with the uh, ruben and his team that uh, we're going to have a business school in addition to this that we're doing this is the summit aspect of the business school and 
the business school is going to be meeting monthly and it's going to be virtual. It's going to be virtual, it's not going to be physical, but the summit can be once in two months. So for the business school, you have to register. Of course, it's going to be free, but you have to register, put in your details. And for people that are serious-minded, so if you are not serious, please will not get in there. And so it's going to be practical. I want to form a community, uh, want to form an entrepreneur uh, community. You know, it's like a business hub of an entrepreneur. So when we roll by, they share, they learn things and share opportunities together. Opportunities together. And then we can look at things in a more practical aspect. Now, the way we may take it at a summit like this, oh, I want to build certain things like this. And then one or two people can share advice, share expertise, and also share maybe one or two connections that we can have that can help is that's a community we are building and you must be doing something but if you are not doing something you should be about to start something you are not there for six months you are not doing anything who we'll excuse you out of the place and praise the lord so it's not for it's not a brain teaser it's not for brain teasing and so it's a productive hub where we can engage productivity and stimulate a lot of things so Back to the thoughts we are building. Now, I want to tell us about the second part. The, uh, we are spoken about the first part. But also, please, before I talk about the second part, let me give us some scriptures. This is a kingdom-based uh, place. Acts chapter, you can note it that Acts chapter 6, verse 3. It says, look you out among you men of honest report, full of what? The Holy Ghost and wisdom. When the honest will select those men, they put integrity first before the Holy Spirit. Please, I want you to know the order of Scripture. Men of what? Why have a lot of people that feel the Holy Ghost? But among the ones that feel the Holy Ghost, we want the one that has what? Integrity. Can you see? Men of honest reports and full of the Holy Ghost. Second Scripture, the centurion in Acts chapter 10. And they said, verse 22, Acts 10, 22. And they say, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man. Can you see it? That's why I say it's not about maybe I send you the, to go to market and you brought my change back. Say who you are. Is, who you are she reflects everywhere. When you are working in an office, all your colleagues will know. When you are in a neighborhood, everybody knows. This is who you must become. That's your first capital. He said, a just man. Can you see how they describe the centurion? Who is he? A just man and one that fears God and of good report among all the nations of the Jew. Everybody know what brought Buhari to power? What made Buhari one election? No, tell me now. Yes, he, he won, even they did all their political rigging, but he won that election. People were leaving hospital bed. A lot of people voted for him. That is first time because of Mr. Watt. Everybody that was tired of corruption, everybody that was tired of this thing, they said, okay, let's go and give it a try. That was the selling point. It was integrity they sold. All of you are looking at me as if you are not in this country. <laughs> eh? Eh, Ibrahim, is it not like that? What did they sell again? It was integrity. That was what they sold. The polling unit where I voted in my estate, people came there and voted for Buhari. It was there, they probably, yes, that first turn of. But the second tenor, they did their political something. But that first tenor, that he came and defeated the incumbent president. It was, you see this integrity. It's a man of good report. Can you see it? Acts 10, 22. Example number three. Ananias, when Paul, the man that laid hand on Paul. And when Paul was describing that man, he said, one Acts 22, verse 12. And one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews who dwelt there. You see what they said about Ananias? Had a good report. I give us another scripture. The bishop, you know, now just ordain anybody because you can speak in you can speak in tongues, right? Yeah. We are just multiplying the uh, parishes and uh, pastor. Uh, uh, church is everywhere. Just Christ, this brother is speaking to him. It's always there. Prayer meeting is the first and he's shaking the ground. We put them and look at the work we are harvesting everywhere. They want to pick anybody in the Bible. This is number one. Just honest report. 
Look at it, a bishop, First Timothy chapter 3, verse 7. You put this man in our office, this man will never fail you. This woman will never fail you. First Timothy 3, 7. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. You see what they're talking about? For your then somebody must have a good report. Among them that what? Without go, let's go and find out who he is in the society. Because who you are cannot be hidden. Someone can be a pastor, a deacon in the church, but in the office they know who you are. Am I correct? Yes, sir. The office, you just ordain you. He say he must be a good report among them that are without. In the larger society, who is the person there? Before we come out and do ordination, you just see who the person is in our meeting, in our small meeting, in our small fellowship, and you now ordain the person. Smart and the person has only with, with the money. You say you don't know, you know. Because you did not even follow what the Bible says you should go and follow. Even when God, when, when angels brought report to God in heaven, who brought the report? Angels. About Sodom and Gomorrah. What did God say? Let me go and what? Let me go and check. Three men, two men walked into the city. It was an integrity test. They wanted to test it. And when they went into the city, the men wanted to sleep with them. The same report that the angels brought to heaven. God walked into that city physically to see it himself. And then those men showed themselves. Even to judge you, God will not judge you until God, God will prove you himself. First Thessalonians chapter 5, what did he tell you to do? He said, prove what? He said, you too must prove what? All things. If you commit money, a big money to somebody you have not proven, when you come and cry, we will wipe away your tears, but will not pity you. Because when you violate principle, right? When you violate principle, you are the one that will suffer it. When you are committing money to people, you commit money that you can, you can, you can give away. But some people, their life saving, money to somebody put in their custody. They just had that this thing is, is doing well, uh, generating uh, 30% monthly. And somebody keep 10 million inside your custody. And you don't have one error on your own. My brother, hold this money. I saw maybe I want to use to do one project, but wait. Okay, let me quickly put it. Eh? Uh, those days of forest, uh, thirty percent per month. Let me, if I put this ten million, I'll make three million before I you return the money. You put that's how you dump the money inside. The money did not come out again. <laughs> a ground that you have not proven, you are putting ten million. I know a foolish person. A grant that you are not proven, you are putting 10 million. You first of all put 10,000. You see, you don't know integrity in one month or two months. It takes time. You prove it for one year, two years. There are some things you need to prove for like three years before you commit to it. There's a whole lot inside here. So, I've read First Peter, First Timothy chapter three, verse seven. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without. Okay, lest he fall into the reproach and the snare of the devil. Hebrews eleven, verse two. He said, "For by it, for by it, the elders obtain a good word. They obtain a good word, report, because they were tested and they were proven. Faith. He said they stood." Of course, that's what God will test you. God will test your faith if you are going to stand and be committed to the things that you are saying or be committed to your devotion. He said they stood and they obtained a good word. Report. He said why God mentioned them there. Look at all the people he was mentioning. Joseph, Jephthah, Abraham, Noah, Moses. Look at the people he was mentioning. All right, the second one is simple. Are we now? After you have passed this uh, st uh, stage of uh, integrity test, let me give our own explain that. What's the second capital? I told us we we'll say money is not the first. Something else is the first. Now we we'll have looked at what is the first. What is number two? Eh? Yes. The second is relationship capital. Relationship. There are things that precede money. In the, in the, in the, when you draw the distribution of 
money, money is the last end of your capital need. Relationship, relational capital. Relationship. And this one is a very big one. Very, very big. Of course, you know, you bring integrity into relationship, right? So you see, you have laid one very good foundation. You now bring it here into relationship. You see, what produces more billionaires in the world, or more, what produces more billionaires and more millionaires in the world is this relationship. There are three things that gives us wealth. Three, th three things that can make you wealthy. Number one, skill. For all those of you that are gifted. Everybody play football, but when Messi touch football, is it the same thing? You know, you have only so many footballers that at the end of it, they can't feed their, feed their family, right? They are the gift. This one is skill, creative ability. Some people are gifted. I'm not talking about the normal pulu. I mean, this extreme skill, gift. People are genius. Some people ask them, uh, 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 89 times 13, they will give you the answer. But you know, you start thinking, and this all of us are there, most of us are there. You know, you start thinking, they don't care. 89 times uh, 16, they will just call the answer for you. Those ones that came out, that is number one word, special ability. Anywhere you are, it will, it will give you money. They will carry computer, they will design stuff and all kinds of things. Number two, inheritance. So, I mean, the first one I mentioned, how many of us are there? How many of you do you know that are there? No special, if you, if you. So the word there is, is contained, is limited. The second one is inheritance. How many of you had inheritance wealth? Your father left uh, 10 billion for you, or left uh, 250 million for you. The second source of uh, wealth, I say, is inheritance. When you, just, you are just coming to inheritance, they leave 250 billion, leave uh, uh, 120 million for you. How many people fall into that category? There are few, right? That's the second one. But the third one, that one is open to all, is relationship. Yes. Relationship. You are, you, are, you are close to someone that is very, very rich, and you know what you are doing, right? You, if you have, your friend is a billionaire, you know what you are doing. Even if you are not a billionaire, you end up being what? A millionaire. So relationship has created more wealth in the world than any other thing. That. Oh, somebody comes to office. Oh, my friend, my clock cost cl me. They pass a governor of uh, Kogi State. You know, we're in school together, maybe like a year or so ahead of me in school then, that uh, just left Kogi State. When he came to power, he went to all those his friends in school. He was picking them, picking them, and putting them. A lot of them now are working. So one person rise up and he go and pick multiple words. People. You see, you see relationship, capital. That person I told you that was working in an office and they gave him a, that uh, the boss recommended him for another something. What happened there? Relationship capital. When Oshimbajo became the VP, what happened there? Relationship capital. Some of us, you can't, you are not relational at all. You just, you are just there on your own. You don't really, God created us to relate with this world. Look at the tree. A tree relates with the atmosphere, right? Relate with the heaven, the sun coming from heaven. Relate with the atmosphere around it. And relate with what? The properties inside the soil. You engage and interact. If it does not do that, that tree will not grow. That tree will not survive. Or you, can, you have to be a relational person. Relational person. There are people who just love them. You're always asking about how are you doing? How is everything? Oh. Oh, you, st you mentioned you were doing that business. Before is that business doing? Oh, I'll, let me branch and stop by. You have to. You have to be. You have to be relational. That's who you are. It doesn't mean I mean me. Some people there, they are just on their own. They are just in their own world. After some time, people just discard it. You have to be relational. So the three sources of wealth I say, what are they? Number one. Skills. Number two. Yeah. Number three. Yeah. Yes, everybody falls under that category. 
with us. Sometimes people that are climbing up, maybe just you may not, you know, you don't have money to give them, you don't have anything to, but you just help them in that journey. Just be there. Some people just you are just there. You have, you have a lot of work to do. And no, I don't have money. I don't have business. Sometimes relationship can give you money and give you the business plan. Once they can see integrity inside. I say very honest, okay, this be okay, do this, don't worry, you know, go and manage this business. We we'll supply the fund, you just manage it. I mean, of all, remember the example I gave us here last month? The person that we met in Abuja, that had integrity, right? Yes. And today the person has a company. By two things combined, the person has integrity and what? Relationship. The way you attempted to me and my wife and everything, I say, ah, it didn't touch my heart. And it was just, I, I said, what you are doing is a company. I can get people that can shape you structure to a company. They'll give you the resources you need and you float your business. Because I know people that were interested in that particular line of business. But he doesn't know, he doesn't have access to them. But he had integrity, he had relationship, and he got a company. Are we together? So there are different forms of capital. That's why I say, let me drop that one before we continue. We've done integrity, we've done what? Relationship, right? Now, after you have crossed these two places, hmm? now you have a business on ground. You have your business plan, you have your what you want to do now. That's the next stage of the conversation I want to have and then we'll stop it there. Okay, now, the last thing people want to give out. Hmm? The last thing people want to give out. This is something about strange about business. The last thing people want to give out is the first thing that you want. So how do you get it? How do you get it from there? Eh? The last thing somebody wants to give out is the first thing that you want. How do you get it? You see, business funds or business capital is the last thing people want to give out. Someone can have money, he can give you that change on top. Oh, this one, you know, when he does his budget, this one is for my investment. I want to invest this fund. This one I can use to help people. When you come, he can give you that one. But this one, he doesn't want to give it out. And you that you want, you want to do business, that you need funds, that is the money you get you want. How do you get it? Are you getting my story so far? The last thing they want to give out is the first thing that you want to get. Because there are other money people can give about this business. For everybody here, you know, everybody say they don't have money. When you miss one, you say, I don't have money. You are discounted down. This one is what? A business fund. So it's not as if it does not have but at this one. And this is the money that you want. How do you get it? Are we together? To give it out, two things must happen. Number one, they want extreme assurance. And number two, they want to see the future. You say, I need business. Every lot of us now, there's a lot you can do with fun. Money, I want business, money, business, money. I have this idea. If I can see you that pump funds inside. Okay. Okay, yes. Are we together? Oh, we want to pump uh, money into this business. The last thing people want to give out is the first thing that you want. How do you get it? I say what? Two things what? Apple. Number one, they need extreme what? Assurance. And that's what we covered in the first part is integrity. Right? Integrity assures. You need extreme what? Assurance of the safety of that phone. And that's where integrity comes in. That's number one, right? Number two, they want to see what? The future. And this brings me to the second aspect. I'll just lay it open so that uh, I can take input from us. They want to see what? The future. That means build a history, a business. Build a history. They, we see the future from the past. It's not forecast, so it's not business plan. If they, you are going to talk to people about business, this and that, they want to see the future. They will see the future from what? From the past. You see why you see government, uh, businesses publish their financials. They will publish five years uh, financial. They don't need to meet to talk to us about the company, talk to us about the potential, talk to us about. No, they will just look at your financials. And people are sending money from abroad. 
You don't need to speak. You put your records on the table. Build a history. That's the second aspect I'm talking about. That's why I would say start something somewhere and then grow it. That's why don't despise any beginning. What you have started with 10,000 naira, 10,000 naira, and you are able to build and grow it now, and it's now, it has grown to like 50,000 naira. You are, you are building a history. Don't despise it. Somebody will look at it. Ah, you started with 10,000 and here you are with 50,000. Over the time, over 18 month period, over like 12 month period, that means if you have more funds, you are able to do more. That's what I'm simply saying. To cut a whole story was shorten it. What are you doing? I, be intentional about building a history. Build a record. You are building a business plan and pro proposal on ground. These are people, but someone that is looking at the business plan, they are looking at your history. That's how it works. Build intentional and deliberately build the history. Sometimes, you see, that's why, you know, I told us something that don't be, it's a haste. Like somebody said that holy is not of the devil, holy is the devil. And holy is the graveyard of so many businesses or so many business potential. Don't be in a hurry. Can you sometimes, hey, this thing, this thing will build, it grow within uh, two months, three months, within one year, no. Do you know, can you take a business and build it for like, there are some that you might need you to build for like three years before you go come out in the open. And when you come out, you show this is what I've done in three years. Wow. I have a, I have, there's one or two business, and if you meet, I'll not tell you what it is. Some business I'm building, but I want to build, I want, I'm building a history. But by the time I finish building the record, and I, I will describe my wife, this one, maybe three years, six years, uh, let's build it for three years, before I even come out and tell you. Can you see? You build, of course, some you can start telling people, but build what? A history. Build a record from historical record. From history, we we'll see what? The future. Where do we build goodwill from? Goodwill. His goodwill is built from what has been done in the past. No, well, because of grammar, I always like to give practical example. Somebody sows, you are sowing, right? They give you clothes, you don't deliver. <laughs> I, I, you know, you are not building a history. You know, say, I don't have, but the five clients that you have, the five that you have, they give you a job and you don't deliver on time. That's how you build what? A history. They call you for catching work, come and do catching. You want to maximize profit from that first job. You want to make as much money from that job. You are not after delivering. You can deliver in that job and you don't make any money. You know what you are doing because you want to build on what? You are building a history. Japanese companies, how do they do their, their work? A Japanese company will operate at a loss for five, for three, five years. They will get you used to the product, right? And after you are used to that product, you can pay anything for that product. It's very simple. Why are they, they are building goodwill? They want to get you used to that vehicle. Like a person like me, if I want to go to the market now, I cannot buy a car that is not Toyota. Have they not got in me? They have. They have got in me. So, I not get like 100,000 people like that as captive, right? So, that's how it is. So, you build what? Your, your own what? History. By delivery, the way you work, the quality of your service, honesty, integrity, all these things we are talking about. So, some of what you need now is not how much money you can make from that business. Just build what? Your history. When you build a history, these two people, the people of integrity, right? I say two things, Abby, to collect the money from them. I say the last thing they want to give out is what? Is their phone. They want the aspect of their money that is for business, fund, and capital. And that's the first thing that you need. To get it, I say you need what? Extreme what? Assurance, right? Which is integrity. And then you need to show them what? The future. If I'm going to give you my money and I cannot see the future, will I give you? Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Can we appreciate it one more time? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's actually a practical um, session where he's pouring his heart to us. Please, let's have a very balanced view of business. I received a call, was it not two months ago, from one of these companies, I think Honda. They said a car they sold to us, to my company, that they needed to um, change a part there for free. You know? So it's not all about making money, but that brand must be there. So please, um, beyond the money you make, beyond the small change you make, build a brand. Have integrity. Pastor, thank you so much. Sure. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think it's well taken.